Our next step is to write a component to make sure our board is in, in an invalid state. By invalid state, I mean um, we haven't got more mines surrounding a cell than its initial mine count, and it is possible to fill enough cells with its initial mine count. But before we do that, we need to change our code slightly. The problem is, in order to validate we've got an invalid board, we need to be able to set up an initial board which doesn't just contain mine count, but also the positions of some mines we found and some empty cells we found. And at the moment, we can't do that because when we build our initial game state, we can only pass in the mine count. We have no ability to pass in if a cell contains a mine or not. So instead of passing in, we could continue to use an integer array, but then the core of this code would have to know that minus 2 meant mine and minus 3 meant empty, which doesn't really make sense. So I think we'd be better off just passing a, a character, because that would be consistent with our cell content method, which always just returns a character anyway. So the first thing we need to do is change our test. Here. So I can put on another test in my case. I check mines and empty squares and we will say one is a mine and two two in this example. Is a miss. And then I should like to do it. Okay, so our first problem is we obviously can't put characters into a integer array. So we need to change this to be a character array. And maybe yeah, these might well be characters rather than strings. And we can do the same thing with our other tests. Okay, so now our problem is obviously that our game is expecting an integer array or a novel integer array and we're passing a character array. So we're going to need to change that. And then so that's going to fail down here. So I think. So now we need to convert. I think we need to do the opposite of this method. So. So we read what it is at the moment. And we switch over to that. If we're given a mine, we can give a mine, miss or empty cell. Empty means we don't know what it is. So then it's going to be the numbers 0 to 8. So we can. Yeah, it might be clearer just to write that as we've only got 9 rays. And then anything else is something we don't understand, so we use our discard operation for that.
and then we get the orange one line. That's good. I'll just build it and see. I'm sure we're going to get some compiled errors. Yes. So. Around that, so we can check if it works in a second. So, this is in our test, uh, our test for method one. Same thing. And the same thing here as well. So one of the benefits of changing this is we can actually tidy up this test as well. Because at the moment, in order to get the game into the correct state, we have to call game and um, solve three times first. We can miss that out and just start off with the game in the state we need at the start of that test. Ah, okay. These contain no. Okay. Right. I think that we miss. Uh, yeah, we don't need this check. And it will be the same in the other tests. The reason is, if our, our cell was empty, we weren't setting it to empty, it was being left as null. It's going to pass a lot more. We might have missed one. Okay, so we've got the same problem here. Uh, 
so we really need to initialize everything to empty. So we find the size of our initial array and we loop over it and we set everything to null or run empty string. Which represents our unknown state. Okay. Not sure if it passes. Okay, and we just check the game still runs. Which it does. Good. So now we can actually get round to the thing we're going to do, which was write the code to validate the board. So, as before, we'll start with a test uh, board validator, game validator. Start off with an invalid board. So I think oops. so uh I've changed this time in a second, so Validating, we just give it a game and get the result back, and then we assert uh, false. It's not valid. And add a reason if we can. Should be two many reminds. And as before, we'll have a set of interest. Uh, dot, um, and, uh, that's 
we want. And our initial game state will be uh, so I think we can just mock up the first four, first eight cells. So it's going to be two across, four down. Just put that in my window. So we do uh, Second row. So we want to put an invalid state. So we have yeah, no one to. So what we're saying is given our board like that with an X save as well, then that can't be valid because it can't be surrounded by any mines. Oh no, the actual test is too many mines. Okay, so main yeah. Maybe we'll be better off actually doing something more like this version. So now we can, so what we're saying is there's too many mines around here, so we need to put a mine there, there. Right, I do. That cell can only be sounded by one mine, and we're doing it two mines. So we can now add our, oops. Game validator. And that's the Zeno validate method. And it's going to take my validation result. And a validation result is. So what we're going to do, as before, we're going to loop over all the cells. If it contains a mine count, we'll count how many mines we've placed. If the number we've in its neighbours, if the number we've placed is too many, then we've got a problem. So it's similar to our method one code. So we have to prefix it from the game because we're a different object. And these helper methods we have to make public. I think that's okay.
um, neighbours with mines. We don't care about the unknown count this one. So if the number of neighbours with mines is greater than our mine count, we've got a problem. In null's time, we're going to return uh, so that is valid and we want to set in yellow properties. So we've got some errors here. Oh. So the set of interest was this one. So instead of interest is this one, so it's column zero, row zero, one, two. Let's give that a try. Run that test. We probably should have run that test for our code, actually. No, right. failed anyway. Do you mind? Do you mind? That's better. Ah, oh, okay. It's actually right. It's worked out that that cell is invalid as well because it's got two neighbours. Uh, we can set that to three though and that should become valid. Okay, and then we can quickly do our next test. Can't oh, place all mines. So what we could say is it's not possible to place all the mines around that five. If we make, we make that an eight, in fact, we can't put eight rounds because we've already got a three above it. Do a few mines seem reasonable? And our eight is going to be zero, one, two, three across and zero, one, two, down. So that test is going to fail. So this time we read the initial mine count, we read the number of mines we placed and the number of remaining empty spaces. If the mine count is greater than the number of neighbours which we give mines to plus the number which is still unknown, then we've got two few mines. That might be it actually. Okay, 
Uh, and I'm just going to break this final one for a second. And then my final test is a valid board. It should be that. So that test fails because that's what we'd expect, and we can quickly sort that out. So, and fingers crossed, all our tests should now pass. So, in the next video, we'll look at actually using this to continue solving our game. Thank you.